he's a handsome bad boy repair man who can't seem to stay out of trouble, and who the ladies can't seem to get enough of. And she's married to a very wealthy man, who can't seem to satisfy her sexually, and she's looking to really spice up her love life. This film is actually based on true events, and real life murder, this is The Lover in the Attic from 2018, spoilers ahead, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. The movie is set in 1913, Dolly is married to a very wealthy business owner named Fred, who owns an apron factory, and she's very unhappy, because he can't seem to satisfy her sexually. Dolly shows Fred an apron she made, which she tells him she copied from a French magazine, she wants him to add it to his apron line, however Fred quickly rejects the idea, and he tells her his customers are not in Paris. She then tells him they can go to Paris and sell them there, but Fred just rudely ignores her and walks away, as he chuckles under his breath. Following that, while Dolly is in her husband's apron factory, she asks two of his workers to help persuade her husband to add the apron she made, to his production line. A repairman named Otto then enters the room, and Dolly immediately sets her sight on the handsome guy, as she slowly approaches him. Otto is a 17-year-old repairman, and an aspiring writer with work already published in a small magazine, and the story he's written is called Mistress to Murder. Dolly reads a few lines of Otto's graphic story, and it's about a violent mistress kissing a man, then she pulls a gun from her purse and kills him. Otto then snatches the magazine out of Dolly's hand, and he tells her, that's nothing a fancy lady like her should be reading. The following day as Dolly prepares breakfast for Fred, he seductively caresses her body, but Fred is on his way to meet with some clients, who's flying in from New York, so he tells her to bottle her mood till he gets back on Monday, and then they can get freaky, however Dolly tells him, if he takes her out to dinner, when he flies back in town, she'll be in a sexual mood all week, however this infuriates Fred, and he grabs her by the neck, and tells her in a very aggressive tone, that he will not bargain for her affection. Then Dolly stands there with a nervous look on her face, as Fred walks out of the room. Dolly wanted too much out of life to be trapped in a loveless marriage, and you can't keep lightning in a bottle forever. Dolly is tired of her boring marriage, and she's looking for some new excitement, so she sets in motion a plan, to get her a new man. Before dinner, Dolly intentionally breaks her sewing machine, by jamming a knife into it. Afterwards, while at dinner, Dolly tells Fred her sewing machine is broke, then she tells him, she was just about to start making a little baby sailor suit for Fred Jr. Fred quickly looks at Dolly unaware that she's pregnant. He then agrees, and tells her he'll call a repairman. Little does Fred know, Dolly is actually lying to him, and she just wants him to call Otto the hot repairman to the house, who she previously met at his warehouse. The following day, Otto arrives to Dolly and Fred's house. Unknowingly to Otto, him being called to Dolly's house that day, would forever change his life. Otto knocks on the door. Then Dolly seductively walks up, wearing a very sexy robe. Dolly opens the door, and Otto's heart seems to drop, when he sees how beautiful she looks, and how sexy she's dressed. Then Otto walks into the house. Dolly then takes Otto into the living room, for him to take a look at the sewing machine. And he immediately finds the knife she jammed into the sewing machine. After fixing the machine, he turns to Dolly and tells her it's now as good as new. She then tells Otto he's good with his hands, then she tells him, he should take off her shoes and rub her feet. After rubbing Dolly's feet for just a few minutes, she takes things up a few notches, and she tells him it would be more fun if he took his clothes off. Otto doesn't say a word, he just stands to his feet, and he begins taking off all of his clothes, as Dolly sits there and watches him. Now being stripped down to his boxers, and waiting for Dolly to make the first move, Otto asks her is she going to take off her clothes as well. However Dolly tells him, she'll get undressed for him next time. She then tells him if Fred asks, tell him he needs another part from the factory to finish the job. And as Dolly gets up and walks away, she turns around and tells Otto, in a very seductive voice, she just might have to break her sewing machine every day. The following day, as Otto returns to Dolly's house, he says that he can't eat, and he couldn't sleep, but he showered twice, because if he was going down this dark dirty road with Dolly, he was definitely going down it clean. Otto excitingly knocks on the door. And Dolly emerges from another entrance, dressed very seductive for him. Following that, Dolly wastes no time, and she straddles on top of Otto and the two begin to passionately make love. After having their first sexual interaction, Otto begins to come to Dolly's house, every single day. And with each visit, the copulating seems to get more and more intense between the two. And while Fred is at work, he is totally unaware that Dolly has now found herself a new young side piece. And the passionate love making continues between Dolly and Otto, day after day, as Dolly now indulges, in her secret hedonistic lifestyle. Exhausted after making love to Dolly. He tells Dolly, he doesn't feel comfortable sleeping with a married woman. Then he asks her, does she think she can consider getting a divorce from her husband? 
She replies telling him she can't get a divorce, because she refuses to be poor like her mother. She then tells him, until he can afford to give her the life she wants, or if something was to happen to Fred, until then, she's going to stay married to her husband. Finally she tells him, he needs to just focus on making her happy. Later that night, a drunken Fred returns home from the bar, as he staggers up the stairs, singing a song very loud. As Dolly accuses him of reeking of liquor, Fred happily dances his way into the room. He then quickly pulls Dolly off the bed. And as Fred copulates with Dolly, she lays there angry, because she doesn't love Fred, nor does she enjoy making love to him. The following day, Otto comes to see Dolly. She takes him into the house's attic, and she tells him it's perfect. She then tells Otto, they can turn the entire attic into their perfect love nest. Otto is confused as to why Dolly has brought him into her attic. She then spins around and tells him to live in the attic, Dolly wants Otto to quit his job and focus on writing, and become her secret devoted lover. He then asks Dolly if he stays there, can he come and go as he pleases, even in the daytime. She tells him he can't leave, because no one can know he's there, and she doesn't want to arouse suspicion, because her busy body neighbors are always watching. She then asks him why would he want to leave, because if he stays, he'll get the pleasure of having her every day. She then tells him her set of rules, he must now follow, the rules are, no noise at night, and he must stay away from the windows, then she tells him as far as the world's concerned, he doesn't exist anymore. She then fully undresses herself in front of Otto, and the two begin to make love, and the scene goes black. As the night falls in, Fred copulates with Dolly, all while Dolly lays there, and pretends she likes it. And while Otto is in the attic, staying quiet as a church mouse, going crazy listening to Dolly making love to Fred. As Otto sits alone in the attic writing a story to be published in a magazine, Dolly walks in with a birthday cake, to celebrate Otto's 21st birthday. Dolly convinced Otto to stay in her attic when he was only 17, he has now spent four years living in Dolly's attic as a sex slave, without any contact with his family or friends, in complete total secrecy. The two blow out the candles on the cake, and Dolly surprises Otto with a gift, she shows him an envelope and tells him, a magazine has recently published one of his stories. The two of them then dance to celebrate Otto's success. Following that, Dolly takes Otto to a club to celebrate. And it's his first time being outside in over four years. The two of them joyfully dance among the crowd of people, but within minutes Otto stops dancing, and he catches a terrible anxiety attack, that quickly debilitates him, as his mind begins to make him think, everyone there is staring at him. Terrified as his body trembles, Otto tells Dolly he wants to go home, and the two quickly leave the club. One night while Fred and Dolly are at dinner. She disrespects Fred by blatantly staring at another man at a different table. Fred accuses Dolly of flirting with the guy, and he tells her to keep her eyes, only on him. Dolly replies telling Fred she's only looking around the restaurant, then she tells him, it's always gotta be something every time they go out. Infuriated by Dolly lying to him, Fred tells her she's never going to be a famous actor, then he screams at her, catching the attention of other people, babe forget the damn dessert, look over there, this is finna get good, then he tells her she's never going to have sex, with a famous male actor that she idolizes. Dolly then tells Fred, if she thought life with him was all there was, or ever will be, she would drink herself to death. Then she gets up and storms away from the table, and she leaves the restaurant. The chaotic argument between the two, continues when they get home, and it grows even more intense. Otto suddenly hears the commotion in the attic, and he quickly comes running. Fred then choke slams Dolly against the wall, and he begins to strangle her. Amidst the fight, Otto comes down the stairs with a gun drawn, and he demands Fred to take his hands off his wifey. Confident to see her boo slash sex slave, standing there holding a gun, Dolly quickly slaps Fred's hands from around her neck. Fred asks Otto, who the hell is he, and he tells him he's Dolly's secret lover, and every day he's at work, they're at play, then he tells him, he's been in their attic for six years. Fred then lunges towards Otto, and the two end up on the floor tussling for the gun, but somehow Otto manages to shoot Fred in the stomach, and he kills him. Otto then quickly comes up with a plan, to make it look like a home invasion gone wrong, he slaps Dolly in her face, then he locks her in the closet, and tells her to count to ten and start screaming, and don't stop until the cops arrive. A few paces ahead, Dolly has found a new lover, a man named Roy. Dolly lies to Roy and tells him, after Fred died she thought the robber was going to kill her, so she brought a gun from a pawn shop, but she gets jumpy having it around. She then gives Roy the murder weapon, and tells him to throw it in the river. Furthermore, with Fred dead and the murder weapon disposed of, Dolly takes her sex slave Otto and her talents to Hollywood, to chase her dreams to be a famous actress. Unfortunately, Dolly can't escape karma and her past, because she ended up breaking up with Roy, and because of this, he brings the murder weapon to Detective Klein, and he tells him, 
that Dolly asked him to throw the gun away in the river. The detective then tells his partner, let's find out where that greedy widow moved. On the other side, Dolly has now established herself in Hollywood, as she throws a huge party at her new mansion, and she even allows Otto out of hiding, to attend the party, but he seems pretty pissed, because he's only there to serve the guest, and nothing more. And the other reason Otto is so pissed off, is because while he's playing waiter, Dolly is flirting with her new lover, her longtime lawyer named Herman. A short time later, Dolly gets a call from Detective Klein, and he tells her, he's in California and he wants to talk with her. Terrified of being arrested for murdering Fred, Otto tells Dolly she can't meet with Detective Klein, however she tells him, if she doesn't he's going to be suspicious. As Otto breaks down from fearing being arrested, she tries to calm him down and reminds him, that Detective Klein doesn't know he exists, nor does her lawyer Herman, then she tells him, if they continue to keep him a secret, that will keep him safe. Following that, one day as Dolly makes out with Herman, after he recently asked her to marry him. A frustrated Otto can be seen walking down the stairs holding a knife. Tired of being mistreated and used, Otto angrily yells at them both to stop kissing. Herman asks Otto who is he, and before Otto gets to answer, Dolly quickly comes up with a lie, saying he's her upstairs guest. Otto then smacks Dolly for lying, and he shoves Herman in the chair, he then tells him he hasn't spoken to a man in nine years, so he's going to listen. Otto tells Herman he's Dolly's sex slave, and he used to be locked in the attic in Milwaukee, while Fred was alive, he then tells Herman that he has to have sex with her whenever, and however she likes, because he has no say so, and he's tired of watching her make love to other men, finally he tells him, Dolly doesn't love him either, she's just using them as her personal sex toys. After Otto reveals the truth to Herman, he takes the engagement ring off her finger, and he tells her, she's more terrifying than exciting, Herman then quickly leaves the home, and he goes to the police station and he tells the detective, that Dolly and Otto are the ones who killed Fred. A short time later the police arrive to Dolly's house, and they arrest them both, and they take them out of the home in handcuffs. In the final sequences of the film, Otto and Dolly are taken to trial, for the murder of Fred, Otto is found guilty of manslaughter, but later released, because his case was past the statute of limitations, and he later disappeared into obscurity, and he was never heard from again. Dolly also caught a break when her trial ended with a hung jury, and the charges against her were dropped in 1936, and she stayed in LA until her death in 1961, and the movie ends here. To watch more recaps of these kinds of movies, click on the thumbnail on your screen and don't forget to leave a comment down below, kindly like the video and subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my new videos, and until next time, stay safe, and take care.